Hi, I'm Hayao Ono. I'm a postdoc at the Throne Catering Institute in New York. First, I would like to thank the chair and the organizers for giving me the opportunity to make this presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about the discovery, significance, and mechanisms of alternative embryogenesis in the nematode C. elegans. The process of embryogenesis has long been known for its amazing robustness. For example, when a new embryo is divided into two halves, each half will still develop almost normally, despite the irreversible halving of the constituent. Such a developmental process is often compared to a canal, which always follows a fixed route. However, it's largely unknown whether, and if so how, the embryo changes its developmental programs, in other words, chooses a different canal in response to environmental factors. The nematode C. elegans is especially known for its robust development. C. elegans is believed to have a completely fixed cell lineage from the fertilized egg to the adult. The lineage was described by John Southstone, who won the Nobel Prize in 2002. Based on his works, it is widely assumed that the adult C. elegans contains exactly 959 somatic cells. To precisely characterize the effects of environmental factors on C. elegans embryogenesis, we extensively trace the cell lineage in embryos. We first imaged MT-labeled cell nuclei every minute with time-lapse 3D imaging, and then we determined the divisions and movement of almost all cells during embryogenesis using computer programs developed by our lab. Using this system, we analyzed developmental changes in embryogenesis under various environmental conditions. After making various such observations, we found that the number of intestinal cells in progeny changes depending on maternal microbes. C. elegans is usually cultured on E. coli, but when mother worms had experienced harmful microbes, such as Microbacterium nematophyllum, the number of intestinal cells increases by one to three in most embryos. C. elegans normally has 20 intestinal cells, but in this embryo, for example, the number of intestinal cells increases to 21 due to a cell division box in red. In this experiment, mother worms were cultured with various microbes, and the number of extra intestinal cells in their progeny was counted. The y axis shows the number of extra intestinal cells, and each dot represents the mean from one experiment. Equal P50, the standard food for cereals in lab culture, but weakly toxic, had a slight activity to induce extra intestinal cells. But no extra intestinal cell was observed on these poor benign bacteria. In contrast, we found some harmful microbes such as M. nematophyllum and E. fecalis strongly induced extra intestinal cells. Extra intestinal cells were also caused by these green bacteria species, both of which are cellular natural symbiotic microbes. So the developmental plasticity described here is likely to occur also in the cellular's natural habitat. Since this developmental plasticity induced by maternal microbes is a newly discovered phenomenon, many questions remain to be answered. But we consider these four questions to be especially important. The first question is how do the microbes act on mothers to cause the developmental plasticity at the most upstream step. First, we examined where the microbe acts on the worm. We restrict the entry of microbes into the gut by an E2 mutation, which blocks pharyngeal pumping. And we found that extra intestinal cells induced by microbes were suppressed in the mutant. Cellulans is androdiaceous which means it is usually self-fertilizing, but rare males can be crossed with hermaphrodites. In cross-progeny embryos, introducing the E2 mutation into mothers, 
but not into further suppress the developmental plasticity. These results suggest that the sufficient presence of the microbe in the maternal gut is required for this plasticity. In contrast, mutants defective for defecation, in which constipation occurs in the intestine, have extra intestinal cells in their embryos, even on E. coli. We also noticed that the microbes that induce extra intestinal cells are described as viscous and cause constipation in the cerebral intestine. So we came to assume that more digestion caused by viscous gut microbes is a key to this developmental plasticity. To examine whether viscosity of gut microbes triggers the developmental plasticity, we utilize Bacillus satiris strain. Bacillus satiris is a model organism known for the studies on DNA replication. The standard lab strain of Bacillus satiris is not viscous because it has a mutation in a gene required for the biofilm production. The standard strain did not induce extra intestinal cells in worm embryos. We next cultured worms with B. satiris natto, which is used for the fermentation of the Japanese food natto. B. satiris natto is classified as the same species as B. satiris, but it is characterized by the production of a viscous biofilm. The biofilm is composed of gamma PGA, a major constituent of the sticky natto strings. We found that strains of B. satis natto strongly induced extra intestinal cells in C. elegans embryos. Mutants defect for the production of the biopolymer gamma PGA did not cause extra intestinal cells. So the gamma PGA biofilm is required for the induction. So regarding the first question, our conclusion is that the maldigestion of gut microbes which is a great survival risk to worms, is an important factor for this developmental plasticity. The second question is, what is the biological significance of the extra intestinal cell division? First, I'll briefly explain the intestinal development in C. elegans. The C. elegans intestine consists of nine intestinal rings, into one to into nine. The first entering contains four cells, and the other entering's each contain two left and right cells, so there are 20 intestinal cells. And the Sagan's embryo has only two primordial germ cells, namely Z2 and Z3. Z2 and Z3 are closely associated with the into five cells during embryogenesis. We examined which cells divide excessively in embryos when their mothers experienced the harmful microbes. Our imaging and cell tracking show that the extra divisions occur mainly in the posterior into seven cells. In most embryos, one or both of the into seven cells divide, increasing the number of intestinal cells to 21 or 22, so occasional into three are divided further. To explore the effects of extra intestinal cells, we traced the positions of all intestinal cells in embryos whose mothers had experienced harmful microbes. And we found that in embryos that had undergone extra into seven divisions, the right side of the cells in the mid intestine moved anteriorly, resulting in a left right asymmetric cell arrangement. For example, int 5R was paired with int 4L, but not with int 5L. During embryogenesis, T2 and Z3 take on an hourglass shape and each insert a lobe into the int 5 cells. Presumably, through the lobes, these PGCs are not by the intestinal cells. But in embryos with extra intestinal cells, PGCs alter their morphology and adapt their Mickey Mouse shape by doubling their lobes. And Z2 and Z3 inserted an extra lobe into, into 4L and into 6R, respectively, in addition to the into 5 cell. One hypothesis is that this asymmetrical pairing might be good for the primordial germ cells, 
because the int 4L and int 6R can now stem. Consistent with this hypothesis, worms that had undergone extra cell divisions produced more progeny on harmful microbes than worms without extra intestinal cells. We speculate that the extra intestinal cells produced by the int 7 divisions enable the positional changes of intestinal cells that will increase the intestine PDC association by filling the gap space behind the int 6 R cell. And this change might help the embryo to protect PDCs in an environment where damage to the intestinal cells are expected after hatching. The third question is related to how the information about the maternal microbes is transmitted. Since the Sevens embryo is isolated from the external environment by the egg shell, the information on microbes is highly likely to be transmitted first to the maternal germline. We investigated the mutant phenotype of genes involved in epigenetic correlation and found that endogenous RNAi, which is RNAi caused by endogenous small RNAs, is involved in this plasticity. RD4, L1, and RR3 are genes required for endogenous RNAi, and their mutants showed increases in extra intestinal cells even on E. coli. In Siegans, intercellular transport of double stranded RNAs due to the propagation of RNAi from cell to cell, which is a phenomenon called systemic RNAi. Systemic RNAi requires the dsRNA importer CD1. And we observed that mutants of CD1 also showed increases in extra intestinal cells. We next examined the functional site of the dsRNA importer CD1 for rescue experiment. The CD1 mutant phenotype was rescued by germline specific expression of CD1, suggesting a role for somato germline transmission of RNAi. The rescue effect was observed in transgene free embryos born to heterozygous mothers. So the maternal action of CD1 is sufficient. In this experiment, the RNA gene RLF3 was knocked out in a tissue-specific manner using a technique called somatic CRISPR to determine in which cells RNA is triggered. In somatic CRISPR, Cas9 is expressed in a cell-specific manner, resulting in a conditional knockout of a target gene only in a target tissue. We found that conditional knockout of the gene in the maternal intestine induced extra intestinal cells. So the action of RNA in the intestine is essential for the regulation. The embryonic expression was not required for this phenotype because extra intestinal cells were also found in transgene negative embryos born to transgene positive mothers. Collectively, our results suggest that RNA transmitted to the maternal germline suppresses the developmental plasticity in the absence of active gut microbes. As the maternal intestine is a strong candidate as a source of RNA propagation. The last question is how is the extra cell division regulated in embryos? We focused on microRNAs of the MIA35 family as potential epigenetic regulators. There are eight members of the MIA35 family in the Sagan's genome, and seven out of eight form a gene cluster. We focused on them because their expression is highly enriched in the germline, and they positively regulate intestinal cell numbers by targeting the 3' DR of a gene named LIN23. Mm -hmm. LIN23 is a Sagan's homolog of beta trans transducin repeat containing protein, or beta TRCP, which negatively regulates the cell cycle by degrading the CDC25 phosphatase. We quantified the mature microRNAs in the maternal germline and found that microRNAs expressed from the MIR35 cluster were increased when worms had experienced harmful microbes. To check if MIR35 is involved in the regulation of the developmental change, we introduced a multi-copy expression construct of MIR35 into mothers. Introduction of the MIR35 construct induced constitutive increases in intestinal cells in embryos. This induction of extra intestinal cells was observed even in transgene negative embryos, even born to transgene positive mothers. 
So the increased maternal expression of MIR35 is sufficient for the regulation. We also found this effect of the multi-copy transgene was suppressed by a mutation in the MIR35 binding site in the RIN23 UTR and a hypomorphic mutation in a CDC25 gene. These results suggest the RIN23 pathway acts downstream of the MIR35 microRNAs. I want to explain details, but we also found the expression of MIR35 is regulated downstream of RNAi, and there is an autoregulatory feedback loop of the MIR35 expression where the microRNA products positively control their own promoter activity, which may enable the long lasting response transmitted from mother to mid stage embryo. These are our current conclusions about the developmental plasticity induced by maternal gut microbes. This work was performed in the laboratory of Zero Bow, and our preprint on this work is available on BioArchive. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank you, Hao. You just told us that C. elegans does not have an invariant lineage, so I think a lot of people have a lot of questions about this. Uh, one of our first questions is, are the various bacteria you've tested present in the worm's natural habitat, or have you looked at vile strains, and do they also show developmental variability? These are Cenorhabditis vile strains. Yeah. Uh, uh, the some microbes are present in the worm's natural habitat. For, for, well, two microbes are found in Rotom uproads where the white serans uh, strains were isolated. And uh, for example, B. satellites not uh, both serans and uh, B. satellites not can uh, be found uh, widely in plant decay and uh, soil. So I suppose they are highly likely to interact with uh, each other right. in, so, in, nature, in, in, in nature. Right. So you're suggesting that basically there might be other bacteria in the worm's natural habitat that do this? Uh, some microbes uh, are isolated from human, so oh. yeah, I, I don't think all of the bacteria I tested uh, can, can interact with the cell in nature. Right. That's interesting. The next question is, um, how come having two extra intestinal cells does not provide additional benefit compared to one? So why isn't it additive, I guess, to have two versus one? Uh, well, in embryos with uh, two extra intestinal cells, uh, the left-right asymmetry occurs uh, to the same extent uh, as in uh, em embryos with uh, one extra intestinal cell. So maybe right. also, that's why. Yeah, so, so I guess the question is, you know, can you speculate as to why one and having one extra intestinal versus two extra intestinal gives you the same level of asymmetric? Yeah, right. Okay. Um, do you see extra intestinal cells in later generations? Uh, like, is it transfer? We, we, uh, we need to uh, examine it uh, more carefully, but... Uh, our preliminary result uh, shows that uh, segments can adapt to a microbial environment uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, the developmental plasticity is determined by the last microbe experienced by mothers. I see. Um, there's a question directly on the role of the end one three and L seven two expression. So, do the early gut genes the the N13 and the L72, does their expression change in the absence of presence of the harmful bacteria or the RNAi pathway? Uh, we have not uh, examined the phenotype of uh, these mutants. Uh, where the the plasticity is a newly discovered phenomenon, so many genes remain to be examined. <laughs>